Hey guys, how's it going? I'm just sitting here in my nerd room. It's a boring Saturday and I have to do something or I'm going to lose my mind. Um, I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on how to do my Bluetooth proximity light. It's pretty easy. You do need some hardware. Um, you'll need to create some software, stuff like that. Um, but I can show you how to do that and I'll put some links in the description of where to buy all the parts you're going to need. Um, other than that, I think we can just jump right in. So here we are in my nerd room. Um, it's a little messy and not fully complete yet, but uh, here I'll give you a quick tour. Um, here's a, a great piece of art that I really like. Um, kind of ex kind of expresses exactly what creativity looks like. Um, here is my setup, my three monitors. Um, you cannot work on a computer for ten plus hours without three monitors. It's just re it's just impossible. So if you do a lot of computer work, I suggest uh, getting lots and lots of monitors. Um, here is my rig. It's um, a little bit older, um, but I will be updating it in the next probably six months here. I'm getting ready for the CV1 uh, Oculus uh, release. Um, speaking of Oculus, this is the Dev Kit 2 I got sitting here. Um, lots of fun with that. And without further ado, here is kind of the test bench here. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty simple setup. Nothing fancy, just a Raspberry Pi, um, a USB speaker and microphone. Um, it's just an Ethernet for uh, internet right now. Um, of course the SD card and the GPIO pins on the Pi. Going to... I bought this on Amazon. It's it's a much safer way to handle high voltage um, electronics with the Raspberry Pi. You don't have to do any wiring and you don't have to worry about burning your house down or killing yourself. So I suggest getting that. I'll have a link in the description for that as well. Okay, we're here on the desktop now. I got my SSH client open and connected to my Raspberry Pi. If you don't know, SSH stands for Secure Shell Protocol, basically. Um, it's very useful when trying to remote into the Raspberry Pi when you don't have direct access to it or just don't want to plug in uh, an extra monitor and keyboard to it and do all that fun stuff. So I can do whatever I want with this right now. I, I basically got the Linux command line. I can send any kind of command um, and manipulate whatever I want. So. On the left here, you can see I have all my files that are on the SD card of my Pi. Um, and we're looking for my Python script that I made um, that connects my phone, or actually, what it actually does is it connects to my phone and gets some information, which is called RSSI, um, which is Received Signal Strength Indicator, which is the variable I'm using to turn on and turn off the light depending upon that value of that variable. Um, it sounds kind of complicated but trust me it's it's really not. So we'll open this up and Python is really nice because you can actually import a lot of these libraries and ha it just adds a bunch of functionality and saves you a bunch of time with coding. Um, so. I'll save this script so you guys never, you don't have to recreate this, you can just copy mine. But uh, if you want to look inside of it, you can. Um, you will actually have to open it up once and you will have to actually find your, your phone's MAC address and you'll have to put your MAC address here. That way it knows what phone to connect to and what to recognize to turn on the light. Um, here is the if statement block. This is basically what will happen when the phone is set to far mode. And when it is near, this code will go off. And this code right here is what controls 
the light. Um, the rest um, are just other stuff that I have it doing, um, like printing to the screen, it tells me that it's changing to far. But the cool part about this is in these function blocks you can actually put in whatever you want. It's not just an analog switch, it is a digital switch in the sense that you can basically make it do whatever. You could have it have voice or text to voice and speak to you using Google's voice API. And it, it's just it's just ridiculous what you can do with it. But anyways, that's that. Um, don't really have to go into great detail on that. If you need help with this, you don't hesitate to even call me or we can you know we can Skype or whatever. I can help you get it up and running. Um, but enough of that. Um, so if we we want want to run the Python script, so what you need to do is go sudo python and then the name of your Python script. Guess it's case sensitive. And then the pi password. Hopefully, I can get it in the first try this time. There we go. So, as you can see, it's getting values back, which basically tell it where my phone is. Um, and that will just always continually refresh and refresh and refresh, which is what makes everything happen. Um, very easy, but this is just the start. You can do a lot more um, with this program. I haven't had enough time to kind of mess with it as, as much as I've wanted to, um, but it's there and you can tweak it to however you like. And if you need any help, yeah, just don't hesitate to ask. And I could probably make a second video a little bit more detailed. Um, if you want, I'm not sure if there's any of you that actually want to do this project, but um, just let me know if you want to. And uh, thanks for watching.